to this here it says search windows or in in my case it's type here to search and search stata you can call it stata if you want yeah stata take a look stata spelling is important <coughs> um, we had a few <coughs> cases where students type different <coughs> names and they thought they didn't have the app and then again it goes on asking questions stata and it should be there with us now stata environment and I'll explain what this funny looking software is or professional looking I should say <laughs> rather no I cannot do this I need a mouse can I get this mouse uh, all bundled up no okay ready everyone stata is open yes Yes, if it prompts you to update, that's okay, it won't do anything. We don't have the administrator login, so we cannot update anything. Done? Okay, let me do this, uh, this intermediate step. Um, that it will be a bit slower when we have uh, questions, so you have to be patient so that we can catch up. Yeah, that's that. <coughs> now, we will do the next step. I'm going to tell the student once a step more. Have you moved your file into down documents? <coughs> Documents folder, <coughs> everyone, yeah? Okay, we need to open that file now. We'll, we'll now import that file to Stata. The way we do it is just as usual, usual way that we used to do before, or we've been doing it with the uh, Office documents. Go to File, follow me on the screen if you cannot do that independently. So File, Open, File Open, and it should directly take you to the, uh, the the folder you save the data file if not click on documents on the side of your screen or the the open box and click on that file open not few things here um i need to extend this i guess yeah and also this let me give you a some introduction of this what we're looking <coughs> at now this section here the review section review section is is a left hand corner is going to store all the commands we type or execute so the first command here is use in brackets or sorry uh, quotation marks <coughs> the file directory so this is a directory if i if i hover my uh, uh, cursor over that line it just expands and tells me that use the file in this directory and that file is nfs underscore lab w0 dta that's a command to state that huh? I'll, I'll come back to that again later but now the section in the middle here top middle here this section here stata section is is a results section whatever we type in the command box is going to be executed in that section it just displays all the results output now in the command box we will type commands stata accepts commands the typed commands we can of course use the cursor to use the graphs here, all this, all this menu-based interface as well, but better use commands because that makes you feel uh, you learn something. Yeah. Next, last bit here. Yes. Mine doesn't show up. Oh, that's probably the uh, IT issue. If not, if if not, uh, where is your state? Oh, yours is not showing up. The file is not up, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Next one. The variables here. The the variable section <coughs> lists all the variables this file contains. <coughs> there are fifty three variables. Now each of them has a name and a label. Label is just to describe the variable. So the first variable is about number, uniquely, whatever it is. It's not, I, I cannot read it. But basically, these variables are defined as labels. So you can read the whole label if you want. Now, age variable contains information about the age of people who took part in the survey. By the way, this variable, the data file, contains <coughs> information or responses of 
10,292 people taking part in a survey asking them about their personal and professional information uh, and these variables are actually questions so for example this age is a variable but in fact it's a question about person's age if you look at the survey it says what's your age you just circle it or tick it right so it's it's compressed all this information this this variable displays all the information about age of that person why not to look at it now let's do this in the command box type type browse browse can you read browse yeah it's 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 a word for browsing the internet just type that word space and type that guy the age now one easy way is to double click on age here on the side Look at the board, guys. Um, my cursor is there, yeah? Just above age. Double click there. You see, it just brings the age here into this browser, into the code box. Yeah? And hit enter. Hit enter now. Ooh. Yeah? Now you get that spreadsheet of data. Notice that. Notice here. Age is the com uh, column or well, the one column is defined as age is actually a variable column or age alone itself a variable so there's a different way of saying this sorry I'm just repeating myself now the the rows here rows in this spreadsheet show the uh, each row is a person and age variable or age column shows their age um, so the first person is 20 year old guy Next one is a 50-year-old person, 32-year-old, and so on and so forth. If you scroll down, if you scroll just down, you see that there were 10,292 people who took this survey, so who participated in the survey. And the last person quoted here is age 34. Now, this is just showing us just age variable. Why don't we just look at everything all together? Close this. Not stata, just the browse command. Now, look what we do now. Since we executed, we've been executing since some codes, they're all being stored here on the review box. Yeah? Use browse age. If you want to reuse the command you executed last time, <coughs> press page up on your keyboard. Press page up. I'm trying to see, oh yeah, page up. Can you see that it brought, brought back the last code? Page, browse age, yeah? Now, don't hit enter now. Browse and delete age. Delete age. Browse and delete age. Now hit enter. It should bring up now everything. It should show you spreadsheet of all the questions and the people. Look, each, each column is a variable. So the first variable is case number for a person. So this, this person is coded. You, you know you have a student ID number. That's similar to that. Instead of having their names, they, they are coded. It's a personal thing, obviously. And then this variable, I don't remember the label, but you can find out later. But let's, let's, let's read this, yes. Sorry, what did you type in together? Just code. Oh, sorry, browse. And hit enter. Okay. Yep, now, now look. The first person, the first row is the first person, is renting a house or rented apartment. Is a male. <coughs> is he 20 years old? Is, uh, is it fits in the bracket between 20 and 24 years of person or what his age bracket is just that and is a UK national is from south has no child zero no children and if you go on looking if you're scrolling horizontally here if you're going across columns you get even more information about this person is white apparently has no dependents um, single not married, employee, unemployed, or some other things. So these are basically columns are variables containing certain information. And each column is actually describing a response, coded as a variable, yeah? Now, if you scroll down, you see that there are 10,292 people. Now, the task now for today is to explore this data and then try to transform some of the data to a manageable form. Um, now, we've been typing all these codes one thing what we want to know is, or to learn is, when we come back next week to use this Stata file, we want to make sure that all that we do today is recorded. So we will now learn how to do that. And we use for that purpose something called do file editor. 
Uh, to access do file editor, go to window, right here, follow me for that one. Look at the board, I have window on my menu box, click there, scroll down to do file editor, move to the right, new do file editor, new do file editor, and it should give us a new file editor, or oh, this is a do file editor. This is in other words a command file editor, commands. We store the commands here. And you can actually, <coughs> what you do is you can enter as many commands as you wish. So each line basically, you can hit enter. Each line gives you a, a fresh, each hit, uh, each, each, each enter hit, or hitting enter allows you to create a line for <coughs> writing a code in other words. So at the moment I have nine or eight lines to, to type my codes. Now, every time I start Stata, I like to start with clear command now clear basically clears the workspace or clears the previous session variables from previous session so what we do is now in line two um i i need to i think i need to increase it a bit i'll, I'll zoom view zoom you don't have to do that i'm i'm trying to improve the visibility of what we i'm typing here because it's a tiny you get you got these tiny words and people sitting at the back may not be able to see. So I'm gonna do a few times this thing because my laptop has, doesn't have the standard keyboard to use the shortcuts. Now, I think this is sufficiently large. Now, type clear. I want you to note something. Every time I type in Stata, I am typing in low caps, small letters. Don't use capital letters. Just let me say how are you this. By the way, being recorded, I'll, I'll, I'll upload it if I upload it to do. But next time, please come to this side. You, do, you also want to experience doing it rather than watching it as <laughs> well to learn. Okay, guys, clear, yeah? And what I want you to do now is explain yourself what clear is. Tell yourself what clear is. For that, I want you to type, to type star. Now, star is, 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 is a comment symbol star and what comes after that is a comment it's not a command so i want to write um, a definition of clear it is basically uh, a command to clear the history or variables clear the variables from previous session now by the way tom's outline of this exercises contains detailed information so don't forget to read that description of what we are doing now is there next thing is don't clear it yet we'll do it in a minute or maybe let's do that because i need to i need to practice it before we go ahead so to execute this last command highlight clear just highlight clear just i've done highlight clear and <coughs> go here you know the paper and arrow here right here it says execute selection guys execute selection click that and and check if your variables is empty now variables box yeah it cleared the variables so every time you open a do file and start an execution this is what happens it just forgets the all or it just clears the memory from variables and now next thing is I want to re bring the, the variable back variables or data file back to the session but this time I don't want to go to file and open and do this. I want to create it through or, or import it through codes. And remember what I said. If you look at this section here, review section, guys, look at this review section. The first command we executed was use, next one was browse, the next one was browse, the next one was do. <coughs> yes. Um, my clear thing went when I press enter. What happened? Did you clear and then press this, not enter? No, so no, type it again. Then I'm going to do that. Uh, Let me have a look. Uh, uh, it went. What do you mean it went? As in like, How oh, did you? Okay, okay, no, really just type it again. Yeah. One thing is, you don't uh, you don't highlight and press enter uh. because it's <coughs> you just need to press this. Mm -hmm. Take that. Now. You hit enter only in command box. This is where the, you hit enter, guys. If you type the command to the command box, hit enter. 
But if you type the command into do file, you just highlight and click the execute selection. Yeah? Button. Yeah, you, this one here, right here. If I highlight it and hit enter, you see that it deletes everything. So I don't want that. Okay, next thing is I just want I just re I'll, I'll repeat what I've just said. Remember we we've been saving all the history of hist uh, the, the commands here in the review section. I want you to bring you you click on the first command. Use command here. Click on that please. If you click on that, you see that in this box here, in the command box, you see the the code, entire code that we executed right in the beginning. Copy that. Highlight, copy that code. Now, one thing. <coughs> you may have a different different uh, expression with inside this quotation marks. That's because you have a student login, I have other logins, so they may be different. If you have the same, fine, leave it. We, I'm using lap laptop, so you may have same similar code. But don't copy mine. Yeah, M My working directory is different from yours. Some students apparently deleted theirs and then copied mine and was, were getting errors and it took some time to figure out what was the error. And I realized that they, they has actually had exactly the same code as mine. I don't know how they managed to type it. It's a long code, but they managed it. But they were getting error because each of us have different <coughs> workstation and in different workstation you have different paths to this file. So now copy that and I want you to paste that last copied line into your fourth line in the do file. Yeah, I just done that. What? Could you repeat that? Please? Copy and paste into the fourth line in the do file. Take a look at the word um, screen. You see the fourth line, command line. You can you can put anywhere, but leave some space between the clear and this one. Can I put it here. Paste, copy paste. Did you do that? Yeah, the one on the fifth line as well. That's fine. Leave it. Okay. Just above, just above this code now. Let's comment. Let's comment import data file oh just file data sorry we are importing the data yeah we are opening the data <coughs> <coughs> now you may have noticed by now oh well i told you already i guess that we deleted the last variable session or oh, last oh. session's variables list yes sorry do we need to make what do you mean? Yeah, you need. I mean, you can you can make several lines and just come back to them and work. Yeah. You know how you've got a gap between the zero and. Oh yeah, you just go up to that and then click enter, enter, enter. Yeah. Or move them up by pressing delete. Yeah, it it works that way as well. Now next, guys, let's bring back the data using this code. So highlight everything that we just copied, and paste it. This last fifth line or fourth line you have and then execute selection execute selection yeah. and you should see that the variables are back so in my variables box I have bunch of variables now and there are 53 of them by the way yeah so it's that's back and notice that last executed line is basically is described here in the in this section here use this was basically is, is this is what we did yeah, output section to tell us what we did. And also it's stored here as a fifth code in the review box. Now, next thing. <coughs> next thing, what we do? Next thing is, every time we open a Stata session, we would like to tell Stata that our working directory is where we keep our files, data files. So we need to set up a working directory. Um, in other words, the the folder you save with your data is actually the part of working directory so you want to save future files into that folder and every time tell data that you are taking the files from that directory what I'm trying to say is this follow me now I think without doing it it will be hard to 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 to, to understand if you haven't done IT course before so I want you guys to highlight and copy the part within the quotation marks yeah you see I'm just highlighting and copying the part of the code that's within the quotation marks yeah I'm highlighting this from quotation to quotation front and back uh, quotations yeah. copy 
and move down here line number seven or uh, another line and then paste so do that please if you have a question to ask me rather than uh, <coughs> rather than asking the next floor because they need you also is this is basically working directly notice this website and this folder that folder that folder that, and then in the end documents so documents is our final folder in the past in the di working director and I want to tell Stata that that documents folder is my working <coughs> folder so we're gonna set it as a default working directory for the next uh, uh, that that will be used for in the next uh, what half an hour so what we do now, delete everything up to documents. You see, I just deleted the file name. So you copied and pasted, right? Uh, that quotation mark expression. Delete everything up to that folder, documents. And then go to the beginning of that line. Guys, go to the beginning of that line and type CD and space. Yes, CD and space. Leave it, that's fine. That's good, yeah. Just delete this. And a home, CD, perfect. Done. 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 Everyone, no questions? You have to watch the video now. <laughs> Next time, please come. Try to come early. And by the way, there is a touch if you want to register your attendance, right? Otherwise, I'll give you the clickers. Let me, let me just give you the clickers if you haven't touched it. We don't want to spend time going there. And well, and it's been you just pass it along yourselves. Uh, yeah, okay, guys. Next is next thing is let's execute this now. Execute this last line, just highlight and press execute selection. Done now. One thing if you get this message end of do file, that's success. If you get a red message that's a failure so you need to address that last line but if you get that end of do file fine next guys I want you to give this thing a, a, a description and say set working directory set working directory yeah this last bit last command sets the working directory you know I'm doing this because when you come back next week you want to be able to see what you did last time and you want to also understand what you really did last time. It's, these are new things to you, for you. Okay, next. Next, why don't we start doing a proper analysis? And that starts with a bunch of codes for analyzing, oh sorry, exploring data oh variables whatever you call it information and these codes were which some of them now familiar to you were um, browse but let's start with describe describe um, code book browse yeah describe code book browse Now you can individually execute each, each, each code and then see what they are. Take next two minutes to do that. 
just highlight and execute each one so one thing is if I click and highlight describe and execute I get something on the main page and that is basically description of that something is description of the variables I have 53 of them listed here just a description of uh, the file <coughs> and there are 10,292 people who took this survey or participated in the survey and using this information I created 53 variables well it has been created Tom has created them or downloaded them from yes what's the purpose of writing the star in this oh good question star and the things come after star are comments so basically each time you run a code stata if that code comes with a star in front of it stata ignores it because that's some 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 description of data or code yeah but if you don't put the star then stata sees it as a command and let's have a look and commands are usually in blue you see use in my case i, I just oh, yeah. yeah use cd describe uh, they're all in blue these are commands but once you put star in front of them they become green and this is a comment for your own you know for use oh. later yeah you want to come back as i said next weekend and see what command what each command means and that's why we are commenting out before we go on to the next stage yes you Okay, you have a problem. One sec, guys. In the meantime, why don't you explore what browse is, what uh, describe, what code book is. Execute each one separately and check the results for us. to do the proper analysis. Let's pick one variable and analyze it. There are 53 variables. Why don't we look at nationality of people? How many nationals, or what sort of nationals, uh, or how the <coughs> who participated in this survey in terms of nationality? Uh, my understanding is that out of 10,292 people participating in the survey, ni about 90% are British nationals, and remaining are from the rest of the world. And let's check from which countries they came from. For that we need to write a code now and this is called uh, why don't we start with uh, tabulate data comment it just creates a table of frequency table of data now the new code I'm gonna type <coughs> in tabulate um, one thing guys I'm gonna quickly put the battery charger on because I thought it would be enough but it looks like it's not going to be enough so we still have 20 minutes of time left to do and I don't want this to <coughs> give us a problem okay tabulate or in short you can simply type tab either way fine yeah tab one thing now we need to figure out which variable contains information about nationalities and one way I can find out is just going back to the variable list here and scrolling down and trying to find nationality. Oh, here it is, right here. You see, NTNLTY12 is the variable name labeled as nationality. So I'm gonna go back and then tab NTNLTY12. Yeah, type that please. Just copy it for now. You can, you can browse it later once uh, you have time. We have only got 15 minutes. So tab NTNLTY12. So what I'm trying to tell to a stata is this. Tabulate this variable. Tab, tab this variable, yeah? Variable is in black. Code is in blue. And highlight, highlight, execute. Let's have a look at what it's, oh, nice. This is the frequency table and I'm sure you will be using this for your coursework to tabulate some data that uh, Tom is going to give you. Look now, nationality column contains labels of labels assigned to nationals or assigned to people participated <coughs> in this survey. Frequency 
column shows us the count of people who are Indians, Irish, Pakistanis, all these are categories, these are called categories of nationals. Percentage is just fraction of uh, people uh, in each category out of total 10,292. A cumulative percentage is a running total of percentages. Now, at this moment, the cumulative percentages do not make sense because these are nationals. If this was an ordinal data, not nominal data, cumulative percentage would be useful for interpretation. But here we don't need to interpret the last bit here. But let's comment on the first bit. India, basically 39 people out of 10,292 were Indian nationals. Irish were 64, Pakistani 17, Polish people were 115, and whopping 9,214 people were British nationals in this survey who participated. And then other nationals who were one or two for each category were 843, they were minor. That made up 80%, <coughs> while British made up about 90% of the total number of people participated in this whole survey. Now, what we want to do now is create a new variable called UK NAT, and we would like to have this variable to have two categories, one called uh, UK nationals, the other one called non-UK nationals. Rather than having six variables or six categories about some um, minor entries, for example, 39 Indians. So these Indian, Irish, Pakistani, Polish, and others can be repackaged or reassigned to a single category, and that category could be called other nationals, yeah? Because these are, they make a very small fraction of total numbers. Why don't we just have everything put into uh, other nationals in these categories, and then British nationals as a separate category. So we're gonna get two categories instead of six. At the moment we have six of them, yeah? Is it clear, guys, what we're trying to do? We're gonna create a new variable with two categories. One, other nationals. Two, the second one is British nationals. So this is, this is called recoding exercise. But to recode, I need to find out what numeric variables each category here has. So India is coded with a numeric value for Stata to understand. Now these labels are <coughs> for us to understand. But Stata gets the information through numbers. Stata doesn't get it from strings and expressions. So let's reveal the numeric values behind each of these categories. To do that, I want you to go to do file and then say tab ntnlty, which is there already, comma, no label. Take a look at the screen, please. No label. And then I want to execute that and I want you to do the same, please. Highlight, comma, no label. It's not no label because a number of students apparently typed no label eh? and we had an error message and I wasn't reading that and I'm trying to figure out what it was. But it looked like the command was completely wrong. So the spelling was wrong. Now, if you come put this, put this uh, tables one, uh, one after other or side by side if you want, uh, you see that categories are now coded as numbers. India is shown as 356. So the code for Indian nationals is 356 for this variable. Now, 372 is basically code for Irish people. 586 for Pakistanis and British are 926. Yeah, is it clear? So, the first table shows us human way of displaying the numbers or information. The, the last table here shows us status understanding of these labels. Stata will, you know, analyze the data using numbers, codes. So that's why we need the numer numer numerical values for each label, right? Now, we need this information and we've got that. And if you don't have any question, I'll go and do, yes. Um, okay. Take a look at that. No label. So comma, no label. And hit the execute selection button. Is it showing you? No. Okay, one second. So let's see. Oh, that's because, by the way, this is Now, each code, each code is one word. No label here, one word, yeah? Don't leave space. 
its data won't understand it. Don't leave space. And also, don't use large caps. Everything is low cap, small cap. And no um, quotation marks or brackets. These are not part of quotes. These are just strings and expressions, yeah? So now, next thing is, as I said, we want to recode everything into a new variable. And we want to code that, uh, call that variable um, UK nat, UK national. So let's do this. Uh, you don't have to create so many lines. I just did this because I want to pu pull up this thing towards the top of the browser. Um, you do file. Okay, star, create, sorry, recode ntnlty12, which is the file name, to a new variable called UK nat. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. This works so that we don't confuse variables from the other bits of the sentence. So we are recording the old variable to a new variable UK net, and it starts like this here. It's, it's going to be long. Recode space. By the way, this is re record, not record. That's a different word, but we had a lot of students recording it and ha calling out <laughs> in the last minutes when we're leaving and the others were coming. So recode, so take a look at it. Recode, ntnlty12, open a bracket. I need the information here now. Look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna read this numerical codes off the table behind my do file. So the first guy here is Indian guy, three, five, six. If I type Indian, Stata doesn't understand it. As I said, it's all numbers for Stata. Three, seven, two space five eight six space six one six space now i'm gonna skip nine two six because that's british nationals i wanna i want to skip that and put nine nine seven next and all of them is equal to zero you see i'm reassigning to them to a zero value and i want for ourselves to understand to create a label for this zero and th i want that label to be non uk Guys, what you do is now type you non-UK nationals, non-UK nationals, but I'll just keep it short because I don't have enough space there. But you type non-UK nationals like this. I'm gonna, yeah, this one here. Take a look, non-UK nationals, but I will just delete because I need the space for you to see. Wasn't it all small letters? Everything, but, yeah. uh, but in the quotation marks, you can do okay. anything, yeah? Um, that's a good question, however. Sorry, zoom, zoom in. Um, if I if I can, let me have a look. If I can, no, I can. Yes, I thought I did the maximum zoom, but I apparently yeah, didn't. Yeah. yeah, is it visible now? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right now, next, I create another variable. Uh, like I open a bracket and type. Uh, what was the British? Nine nine. No, nine two six. They are one. And I want them to be labeled British or UK nationals. Type UK nationals. Don't forget to close the quotation mark. Once you open it, close them. You get error message otherwise. Next, comma. Now, what I'll do is I'll, you continue typing. Oh, no, let's not confuse you. Type generate another variable and that is UK net once you do this and ready I will explain what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to tell uh, Stata here so if everyone has done the clickers I'll yeah not then at the end then let's leave it for now um, yes what was it You can assign one or two oh. anywhere, but it's just zero and one. Because one, uh, uh, I want to put one uh, because um, to give an uh, assign a <coughs> one. Because if I remember what, uh, uh, what's his name? Tom was mentioning is that they make up the largest category. You know, the 9,000 people. So 90% of the people are British. But it's a choice. You can have zero for British and then one for non-British or two for British and three for, uh, 
So assigning a code is your choice. It's the modeler's own choice, yeah? But I think there is an explanation to why he chose zero and one, which I vaguely remember myself. I, I didn't read it properly. I skimmed it and I should have read because the first week was a was the hardest week, first lesson. <laughs> I, I, I confused students in the first lesson. The first group was an uh, unlucky group. Um, now, let me now tell you what we have been trying to do here and what we have been trying to tell Stata. I am trying to tell Stata that I want to recode this code, yeah, recode NTNL, whatever it is, nationality, which is the original file, into a new UK NAT, so I want to generate a new UK NAT variable. But in the UK NAT, I want to do this. I want to assign to this five different nationality categories, Indian, which is 356, um, Irish, 372, 586 is uh, Pakistani, 616 are Polish, and 997 are others, into zero category. And I want it to be labeled as non-UK nationals. So now I put nationals. And then, next, I'm also trying to do, create another category, and that it will be uh, one, so category one. And I want it to be British, the majority of people who were in survey, were originally coded as 926. And I want to call them UK nationals, for myself to understand, and comma generate everything as that, I mean as this variable. Now, highlight this line, please and then execute selection you see this is a success end of do file if you see this message if you see this message successfully created the file if you see a red message let me know okay there's an error then you need to that's a good thing double check if you have a red, red message yes. let me know. Uh, what does it say Close that. So, uh, nice. Okay. Once you create, uh, yeah, uh, once you create a quotation, start a quotation mark. You need to close it as well. What does it say? Unmatched brackets. Close this. Yes. Done. Mm -hmm. Done. Guys, check what you type. If you open the bracket, you need to close it. If you open the quotation mark. If I have to put this one, you need to close the door. So what's the need? Oh, you need to find it? That's to find it again. Yeah. It's just, you see, the end of the file is fine, but I'm trying to read it. Yeah, fine, yeah? Guys, if you get a red message, read it carefully. It's an error, but it is an information about the error. Next, I want you to do this, guys. I want to scroll down to the bottom of the variable list. And I want you to spot, to get the UK NAT. Yeah, can you see that? At the bottom of the variable list, there is UK NAT, a new variable is a record of original. Now, why don't we tabulate it now? Yeah, why don't we tabulate that variable? So I'm gonna go back to my do file and type um, with a star, tabulate the new variable. And then I want to do this, tab UK NAT. <coughs> Tab UK NAT. We got only three minutes, so I think that we are on time. Yeah, we are right on time for now. So I want you to now highlight and execute this line. Click execute now, and then tell me if you get that two category variable now. You should, yeah? Now that's better now, because we now have succinct information rather than having the six categories. You have non UK nationals making up 1,000 people, which is t just about 10%. That's reasonably you know, a uh, reasonable good number, basically, I would say, of 10, 100%, and 90% are not British. That's more informative me, to me than, if I need to find out about Irish people, then why don't I go just go to the NTNL, you know, original. But for my purpose, that summary is enough, yeah? Now, if you want to know the codes behind these labels, why don't you type this? No label, just for fun, yeah? Comma, no label, no label comma no label and then highlight and execute can you see that now 
zero is non UK nationals, one is UK nationals. Even more, you can type browse UK net. Browse UK net. Last thing now. Highlight. Execute. Browse UK net. Execute it now. Guys, you're talking UK? Yeah, you right? Yeah. Okay, browse space UK net. Hit enter. Oh, sorry. Hit the thing. No, no, no. UK national. And you see that. So the first person is UK national. So 11th person is non UK national. Could be anyone Irish, Pakistani, or Polish. Again, lots of UK nationals here. So it's just a list of variables. Oh, sorry, list of people, cases uh, under the UK net variable. Now, close this box. Now, what I want you to do now is go to file. Oh, sorry, one thing. I need to save this now. Since we amended the original file, original file was. LF, LFS underscore lab W0 that file contained no UK net so we don't want to tamper with it we want to save the original uh, new variable as something else yeah something that we're gonna come back and work so save type save and I want to call this new variable LFS underscore lab week 2 dot DTA type this now so I'm just creating a new variable for next week and I want to highlight oh sorry let's let's give it a comment so that next week when we come back I know what we're doing yeah um, saves the the data file data file with a new name or under a new name whatever you call it is this a correct comment with a new name yeah because sometimes um, I speak the I literally translate from my own language <laughs> so it might not it might not sound right so click now execute yeah it saved it and notice now at the top here right here it's now LFS labs W2 instead of W0 yeah that's the new variable if you go to your directory working directory, that this is one reason why needed we needed the working directory <coughs> Once we set the working directory, anything we save will be in that directory, in that folder, documents folder, yeah? Remember? We created the working directory. Now that's done. So what happened is that this co this command just saved the main file, but we still have to save the do file, this file itself. So go to file here, from do file, from do file, go to file, save as. And just go to that directory, documents directory. And then type, um, I usually do my do file, but you can have any other do file names you want. I think that um, Tom wants us to leave, uh, save it as lsf underscore do <coughs> underscore lab w2. That's one way of saving it, but save it anyway. But do not leave space, use underscore all the time. Okay.